Ilka, it is so much fun to be here with you on stage at Slush. The last time you and I were together, it was in the hallowed halls of Harvard Business School. We had just written a case about Supercell, and it's about the situation that we're going to be talking about today. So let me, let me jump right into it. I want to ask and put the audience in Ilka's shoes here. So we're going back to the summer and the fall of 2023, and there was great news at Supercell. Two billion in revenues on the top line, nearly a billion in revenues on the bottom line. Hundreds of millions of people are playing your games every day, every month. But then you've things on your mind in the summer of last year, one of which was uh, Supercell wasn't growing. You'd gone five years without a hit game. Uh, that meant you were losing share and had even dropped out of the top 10. Now, it's September now, 2023. You're headed to an offsite, an all-hands meeting, everyone at Supercell. Is this good news? Is it bad news? What's on your mind? Uh, well, I, I was actually quite... Um worried about the company at that point because um, and, and you know like uh, so we found it super cool to create these games that are uh, like as many people as possible would play for years and games that would be remembered forever and if you sort of think about the big picture you know the fact was that we hadn't actually been growing for a number of years and at the same time the market was growing therefore we were losing losing share and if you sort of uh, if that kind of trend would have continued for, for you know, uh, say for a decade, you know, at some point the fact is that we would sort of fade into being irrelevant, and therefore we wouldn't actually reach uh, our mission, and which of course is a huge problem. And, uh, and then you know the more I thought about it, like you know, I, I just you know, I, I guess I approach it from this perspective that there's like two options we have, like either. We, we change the mission, so actually we, you know, we are not here to create these games that are remembered forever, or we somehow change something about the company in order to get to better results, and therefore we have a better chance at, at some point reaching our dream. But Ilka, this is sort of a crazy situation, meaning that as a CEO it's easy to drive radical change when the company isn't doing well. But by all outward appearances, the company was doing phenomenally, so you get to the offsite. What is it that you actually proposed by way to solve the problem of, on one hand, great financial news, but on the other hand, limited growth? Uh, well, I, I think, you know, um, before even, even I go to the change, I think it, the, the first step was just to, like, you know, make sure that everybody in the company is, is on the same page so that we actually all understand the, the context. And, uh, and you, know, we, we, you know, we did things like we actually... Um, watched a timeline where we were see, like, seeing like super sales like position drop, dropping you know year by year like and, and finally even out from top 10 and it's of course a very painful thing to watch yeah. but I think it's a necessary thing for us, us to do and really like face the truth and, and maybe like and obviously like, when you want to change you know the change has to it, it actually has to start from, from me and, and you know at Supercell we have this um, uh, sort of a habit of like celebrating failures and especially celebrating the learnings that come from these failures and I and we do that by drinking a champagne actually and I had a pretty big bottle not not big enough but I had a pretty big bottle of champagne on the stage and I you know uh, you know uh, took took a sip and, and just to like show people that hey you know uh, you know we are all, all all make mis mistakes but really like we, if you can go to the sort of problem and then what was the solution so the, the fundamental problem was that you know if you think about our mission like for us to be successful in, in, in that mission, we need to be really great at two different things. Mm. The first one is that we have to be great at creating new games. And, and, and then secondly, like once we've created a great new game, we have to make it even better for that game yes. to be remembered forever. And the problem was that we were trying to solve these two very different problems using ex exactly the same type of approach. And, 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 you know, and, and, but that approach, of course, had made us as successful, but it wasn't like you know relevant anymore and didn't work work out anymore. So therefore, like we, we kind of decided to split the problem into two different parts, and, and in the essence, like we st and we start to think new games as their kind of own startups, and we applied kind of what I would call the old supercell culture to those those parts, um, and then the, the live games part, we start to think about them 
as sort of startups which have already like found the product market fit, therefore they become scale-ups. And then it's the question is that okay, we've now created something that it's 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 awesome, but how do we make it even better? And then you get to things like scaling and, and, and so on. But the, but you're really describing creating taking one company and creating two companies and the new game side where you're originating games looks a lot like Supercell in the early days and the live games starts to sounds like it's starting to look like something more traditional from the gaming industry, which is not what Supercell has looked like from the beginning. Well, I, I guess the irony is that we, now that I look back, we actually like decided to double down on, on, uh, on the kind of the fundamental values of, of Supercell and on the culture, because we, we found it Supercell um, uh, you know, um, on, on this idea that we are all about the game teams that we call the cells, and you know, we, it's actually these cells who are like completely independent, and they sort of run the run the show. And in a way, I, I feel that you know, the solution actually doubled down on, on that type of uh, thinking, but we just got a lot more serious about it. So say on the new game side, uh, as you can think about them as startups, you know, we, we had all, always said that it's, it's all about the team, but then they actually like, decided to get a lot more systematic about creating these new game teams. And for example, we um, formed this um, kind of new sort of uh, initiative that we called Spark. Uh, and and this, what Spark is, is, is all about is that we uh, apply a very, very systematic approach in like, creating these uh, new game teams. And we have a mission of like, we want to be the world's best company in, in creating these uh, new, new game teams. And as an example, we, for example, have a professional psychologist as part of a team who kind of evaluates the, the team. Because at Supercell, like, what makes us very different as a games company, we actually don't sort of green light or approve game ideas. Mm. That's not what we do. We green light and approve teams. But once we're, say, team at Supercell, or sell as we call them, we trust them 100%, and then that sell can build you know, uh, whatever game they want, uh, as, as long as it kind of gets us closer to our mission. So, so we just got a lot more systematic about team building. Uh, on, on the new game side. And then on the live game side, or, or on the scale-up side, we just realized that uh, you know, we had been like, way too happy um, with our, our kind of thinking of this like, very small, kind of cozy teams. Yeah. And, and, in, and it sounds like terrible, but in a sense, we had uh, put like, our own interest uh, ahead of our players' interests. So, we, so even if we were very well knew that you know, with bigger teams we could do way more for our players, we still decided to stay in our own comfort zone because that's how we, it, it always had been. And of course, you know, that approach had made us successful. But you know, what we then started to do on the live game side, we started to think about them as their own independent mm. business units, almost yeah. like companies within the greater, greater company. And, and we actually did start to grow them quite a bit. And of course, with growth comes things like structure and, and process, which, and both of those two things, even middle management, uh, and, and all of those things like, used to be kind of almost like curse words at, at Supercell. But, but then you know, like we decided that, okay, like we have to change something. We have to, we have to really like, uh, uh, place our players uh, uh, first. And if that means that we need to get, like, we, we, if that means that we have to get, like, um, go to the uncomfortable zone, then, then so be it. Yes. Yeah, so I, I should mention that for those who want to go deeper, Ilka, you wrote about this in February of this year in one of your famous blog posts. But that is a really interesting one, which is the question of where is your primary loyalty? I mean, you built this company around a structure that was designed to attract the, the best gaming talent of the world, best people, best teams, best games, and part of that was to create these small autonomous cells and push decision rights, green lighting games, launching games, all of that down to the cell level. Now you're talking about the live game side of the company where you just said multiple layers of management. I remember talking to your head, Stuart McCaw of, of, Clash, of the Clash of Clans team or cell, who was talking about the fact that he came to a company meeting in January of 2023 and introduced the idea of hiring the first middle manager at Supercell. And there was like this huge backlash of, oh my God, not a middle manager at Supercell. That means the dream is over. So this issue of like, are, are you primarily loyal to our structure or culture? Or you're saying actually the primary loyalty is to outcomes for our players. Well, obviously, like the, the obvious answer is that, of course, you know, it ultimately we, we actually we owed it our, our players, you know, to like figure out a, a better way of working. But, but I, I would say that you know the, the, the fundamental idea of Supercell like still like uh, lives very very strongly. So I mean you know like I, I oftentimes have like I guess called myself like the least powerful CEO. And what I mean by that is that you know in in our sort of uh, uh, organization um, 
like the more decisions the team makes, the better. And as you said, we want to like delegate all of those decisions yeah. to the teams. And, and in an ideal world, the teams would make all the decisions. Therefore, I would make zero decisions, which would then in turn make me the, the least um, powerful CEO. Um, and, 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 but I, I think that is very, very much still true. So, I mean, all of these live games, they are very kind of independent companies, if, if mm. you will, and, and the decision making has been pushed to them. But then they've been actually doing quite a lot of like radical innovation on like how do we actually work, uh, you know, within those bigger teams. And, and you know, there are like ideas like, um, and concepts such as like what they call the sub cells. So imagine a bigger live game yeah. cell, and then that's like that consists of these like smaller sub cells, and there's like certain amount of independence within those sub cells. Of course, they then should be all aligned and, and work towards the same common goal. But we've, we've done like things like that, then. and also like we had with this, this fundamental discussion about structure in, in in general. And and you know, oftentimes people think about, and we we certainly used to think about structure as a kind of a almost like a negative thing, and, and processes as something that kind of slows you down. Yeah. But then they came to the realization that there's also a, a, a such a thing of a kind of good structure and good process. And what's, what that means is that a good structure actually enables people to focus on what's the most important thing, which is the work. It, it cr creates clarity and, and all those type of good things. So often now we try to actually talk about okay, what is like good process, what is good structure. And, and I feel that we've gotten a lot more comfortable with that idea. So I remember at the beginning of 23, when you were beginning to think about these changes. I mean, just to give folks a sense of the drama of this, the Clash of Clans cell had 17 people on it, and Clash of Clans was doing more than a billion in revenues every year. So remarkable to think about the, this question of your success had, had, in a sense, forced the idea of thinking differently about how, in fact, you ran the organization. But my question is, Ilka, as long as you and I have known each other, you've talked about things like getting big by thinking small, as you just said, being the least powerful CEO in the world. But you walked into that offside and did something very CEO-like, which was ultimately to do a pretty radical reorganization of the company. How do you square those two thoughts? Well, we know there are like these certain uh, moments in, in time there. Um you know, like uh, you know, somebody like 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 me just has to sort of step in and maybe shake the tree a, a little bit. And and, uh, and I, I guess like one of her learnings, like for me personally, has been that you know it, it's one thing to be sort of successful, but the really really hard thing is actually to to repeat success. And success can be a kind of dangerous thing because oftentimes you start to look like to the past and, and you yeah. know, what has made you successful, and you can tend to stick to those ideas, and then you don't realize that the world around you has changed. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, um, and I, in, 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 uh, I, I guess the irony is that I, I think it, it would have been probably even easier to change and we probably would have done it faster had we been like, you know, less, less successful. Um, um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, you know we, I guess the leaders just need to step in and, and sort of the way I think about like Supercell, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I haven't, you know, none of our games, hit games have been my I ideas. You know, I, I don't work on those games. It's all about our like amazing people, amazing teams, so I, I, I don't tend to focus that much on the product, which well, many people um, find surprising. But my product, like what I do focus on, is actually the organization, it's the culture. Mm. And, and, you know, and, and now we, had, we clearly were at this point that that had to change. Uh, so, so I, I, I mean, I think everyone here, at least from Finland, knows that you do release, as a private company, annual financial results, but that doesn't happen for another couple months. On the other hand, I've seen sensor tower stats, which suggest that revenues have doubled, installs have doubled, so it seems like this is working. Yeah, obviously I, I can't uh, comment on the figures, but, uh, but I can say that, that yes, it, it, it definitely is, is, is working. You know, all of our live games have uh, grown this year. It's, it's been a fantastic year uh, uh, so far, and, 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 and also I want to make this like super clear. Like, all the credit like really goes to our like amazing people amazing teams you know and i'm so so grateful like for the teams and people who actually jumped on on this change and and you know they and we, we talked about this idea that we actually have to get comfortable feeling uncomfortable and and i have a greatest amount of uh, amount of respect for our people who like really like decided to make that bold change, like despite all the success that they've, they've, they've had. So, but yeah, very, very happy about so far. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I feel it's a so, so early days for us. Like, you know, we, 
our like ultimate dream is is that we want to like uh, you know create these games and this company that you know would last essentially uh, forever and that we remembered forever uh, that will have a big impact uh, on people around the world and we'd love to be like seen as an iconic company like you know we look up to companies like say Lego or or Nintendo and those type of companies and you know Nintendo is more than a hundred years old by now and they you know for decades and decades they released amazing games that are you know people all around the globe love uh, and, and play um, and and you know if you think about uh, us from that through that lens we have a long long way to go go still and uh, and I feel that what the these changes are just the beginning and and you know we've we are still really trying to learn like every day like how do we actually work uh, better in this new setup and and with more people that we have but but Super excited and and uh, and and what this all of these changes and these bigger teams on the live game side in, enable us to do is basically can do just more for our players and we can do better for our players. I I I love the fact that you talked about. I mean, it's the challenge in the entertainment industry, the creative industry, obviously the gaming industry. There are many companies that can generate one hit game. Supercell has been extraordinary to create a string of hit games. But I come back to that notion that it would be very challenging for anyone coming into, like your all hands in September, of that issue of, you know, one version of this is to take that mission, that grand mission about creating games that are remembered forever and change the mission. And the other version of it is actually change the company because you can now deliver on the mission. Um, when you're standing at that offside, you mentioned at the beginning Supercell's tradition of celebrating failure with these champagne receptions, which everyone who knows about Supercell knows that and loves that. But it's not, of course, about taking wonderful champagne and toasting failure. It's about toasting the learnings that you can extract from failure. So here you are, Ilka, standing in front of the entire company um, with, as you said, this very large bottle of champagne, having a champagne toast, essentially saying that the failure was not at the game level, it was at the company level. So what were the learnings that you were extracting from the last few years? And what are the learnings that you shared with the company at that time? Yeah, well, uh, of course, I want to like start from the obvious. Like, of course, like all of this, like, ultimately, it was my my fault because I, I should be the ultimately I'm responsible for like how the organization works and and uh, and, and uh, especially the organizational design and, and the culture. So you know, um, it, it definitely definitely all, all my fault. Um, so I, I think there's sort of the first few learnings in here. Like the first one is what I just referred to is that you know, like it, it is dangerous like when you get a, like a, you know a, a lot of success and of course you know supercell we've been like super super lucky in our lives and you know we've been lucky to have a, a put out like you know number of these massive hit games but you know sometimes that can be the success can be also a dangerous thing and and you know people like tend to like focus too much like what has made you successful uh, rather than okay what should we do at this very moment of time and and you know rather than uh, looking to the future Maybe the other learning is that you know, oftentimes when people talk about culture, they they and and they talk about how the culture is changing. Oftentimes, that is like perceived in like a negative light. So I say that okay, you know, our culture has changed. You might think that oh, like it must have like changed for the worse. Um, and and I think the really big learning, at least for us, is that you know, actually the culture should evolve and it should change all the time. But it should change, of course, for the better. Yeah. But it just makes sense that uh, you know, like. As the company grows, you, you learn more as years go by. I mean, all of those learnings should be applied to the culture. And, and as, as our games need to get better, like every single week, so does our culture. So I, it's just so interesting to me that most people I know in corporate life, uh, whether startups or large scale enterprise, they think about culture as something just happens. It's sort of like something like the weather, like, like the weather here in Helsinki be very surprising and cultural change very surprising. You're talking about a really different way of thinking about it, which is culture is an input, not an output. It's something that you're actually using to craft this thing that you're primarily focused on, which is not at the game level, but at the company level. Yeah, you know, like the, the results, how I think about results, including the financial results, they're just an outcome. Uh, and, you know, and, but you maybe like sometimes it's, it's better like not to focus so much on the, on the outcome, like focus on what, what actually goes in, focus on the inputs and focus on the things that you can control. And I, I, I absolutely believe that, that you, you can control like the type of people you have in the organization, you can, you know, control like what type of teams you're building, you can certainly control the culture and that's also like how we kind of spoke about it so like you know let's focus on the things that we can control mm. 
And also maybe the other thing is that, you know, whenever you change something, I mean, there's always like a million things that could go wrong. And some people have a tendency to focus on all of those like things that can go wrong. But then they had this very honest discussion that, hey, I mean, of course there are things that can go wrong, but let's not focus on them. So instead of focusing on those million reasons that go, go wrong, let's focus on that one thing that will make this great. Hmm. And, and you know, having that sort of mental uh, mindset, I think, is quite helpful. So, but the big risk here was that uh, having designed the company around this unique culture, and the unique culture was designed, as we talked before, to get the best talent. Now is it still a magnet for talent, having made all these changes? Uh, absolutely, and actually even more so. Uh, like, uh, and actually on, on both sides of the business. So the new game side, like on Spark, like they also did something that they hadn't ever done before. We actually opened up that Spark program, which is all about creating these new game teams. We actually opened it up for external people to apply, mm. and and, it, and it's been actually a really big success. And you know, we are looking for people who like uh, maybe like instead of like you know uh, wanting to found their own startup they maybe they want to just create a fantastic new game and that's mm -hmm. all they want to focus on and then the you know our goal with spark at supercell has been that they want that to be a better option for you than than um, than creating your own startup so if you are the type of person that wants to just focus on creating a game working with the very best people in the world you know yeah. this is your your place and it, it's been incredible like just to see like how many people have like uh, applied and joined and, and and you know been working through this program like from all around the world like people are literally moving to, to Helsinki, you know, with this weather that we have here, uh, to create new games with the very best people, and it's been super inspiring to, to, to see that. And then, you know, on the live game side, the same thing. Uh, you know, now that we have these bigger teams, we can actually uh, make a much, much bigger impact. Mm. And, you know, and, the, and the, you know, obviously, you know, hundreds of millions of people play our games every single yeah. month. So the yeah. type of impact that you can have on the live game side it, it, it is massive and it, and it has only gotten way bigger and better with these bigger and stronger teams. I remember when we were together at HPS last spring, part of what you were saying was that uh, without building bigger teams or bigger cells, in a sense you were underserving the brilliant intellectual property that the company had created, which is kind of a fascinating thought. Now, I have a very different question for you. I just got off the plane from the U.S. yesterday. Uh, in the U.S., in Silicon Valley especially, everyone is talking about this idea of founder mode. Mm -hmm. And if founder mode is supposed to be the received wisdom for what folks like you, Ilka, should be doing, you just did the opposite of what founder mode would dictate, meaning that uh, you, know, you, you're, you're not, you don't have your hands all over every little thing in the company. You're saying far from it, that's not your job. Yeah, no, um, so I have mixed feelings about the founder mode thing. Uh, on, on one hand, I, I, I get there that this is coming from, but it's, I, I think, like, I guess my and, and our sort of uh, leadership philosophy at Supercell is, is, is the complete opposite. So we, we still very much believing in just hire, hiring people who are smarter and, and, and better than you, and then like trusting those people 100% and, and sort of delegating it, it to them and empowering those people and also empowering those teams. And, and that's also like what we did, you know, even starting from my own team, which is the leadership team. So we've actually like hired, a, you know, a, a lot of people will, with experience from like a, you know, bigger scale organizations. And, and I, I find it, um, you know, I, I feel that like, for me, it's been a great, great change. Also, I feel that these days I again like learn something new from these very smart people, like every single day, and 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 you know, of course, like hopefully also making me me better. But at the same, more importantly, making the company better. What I find fascinating about it is that, in a sense, the rationale for founder mode is that on day one, the CEO or founder is the product visionary, and so that person, she or he, needs to swoop in later to keep people faithful to the product vision. It strikes me that your vision from day one was at the company level, like your product, your Ilka's product, is the company, not any individual product within the company. And in that sense, then you're coming into the offsite and doing the reorg was a bit of founder mode, but with a very different approach. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. And, and you're right also, in, you know, when we founded Supercell like uh, uh, more than 14 years ago, like it's uh, like actually interesting even thinking about that like now, like we actually, spoke probably more about the type of company and culture we wanted to build yeah. than, we, we, than we spoke about the type of games we would like to build. And, and as you said, like, especially sort of on, on, for me, the product is the sort of the, the sales structure, it's, it's the culture, it's the organization. And, and then my our like, whole ethos is that we want to hire the, the very best in the world to create uh, these games and we want to create an 
environment where these people can do the best work in their careers and, and, and then, you know, uh, with some luck, you know, create the best possible games. Yeah, it's uh, just in incredibly inspiring, but very interesting to think that if ultimately the, the entire game, that is the entire dynamic of the company is around attracting best talent, then in some sense, if you could create the best product called a company and you put best talent inside that, then in a sense, the brilliant products are a byproduct of having gotten all those other things right. Yeah, it, true. I mean, ultimately, like in my view of a games business is that, uh, but you know, for for you to be successful, you you need like essentially three things. So you obviously you, you need to be lucky, and we've had our like uh, uh, definitely our fair share or even even a higher share of luck, uh, of course. But luck you can't control. But the two things that you can control is that what type of teams do you have and what type of culture you have. And, and you know, we, we, we and I, we, we tend to focus on those two latter things. Well, I must say, Ilka, it is such a pleasure to talk with you, not just as an amazing founder, but an amazing re-founder and somebody who continues to have an entrepreneurial vision 12, 14 years into the history of Supercell. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thank you.